I am so excited for you with this movie. This is a really big question to start with here, but because you've now worked with four directors on this character that I really admire, can you pinpoint something about Elise that you can attribute to working with each of them, a new oh, layer to wow. her that they each helped you bring out? Wow, what a question. <laughs> um, you know what? Not really, because gratefully, uh, they pretty let me pretty much let me do what I was finding. The one note I ever got from James Wan is that I was too funny. <laughs> there was one line it had to do in the very first movie. This is for real because we know she's a very we never really discussed it. And I mean, I've been given notes, you know, in terms of, you know, you want a little more of this or a little more of that. But that's that's given pretty much on set for whatever you're doing. But they've been very respectful and embrace of of whatever I have brought into the franchise. And even in this last one, I remember um, because Elise is often the deliverer of information. And um, I think that was what they fell in love with in the first one, that I had this long two, three pages of talking about the further, which nobody it was setting up a universe that no one had ever knew anything about. And I filled it, though, with um, emotion that there was some that each thing I, I, and I that's my skill as an actress, I think. And I'm you know grateful for Uta Hagen, Stella Adler and Lee Strasberg, who are my three teachers. And don't ever do it unless you're filling it with something of yours. And that's a great comment for any actor out there. <laughs> you oh, know, I love that so it, much. It, yeah, it's never just informational. There's no such thing unless you're really supposed to be a newscaster and only delivering, you know, whatever. But Fair. so long story short, um, uh, there was a scene where uh, specs. He had bumped his head. It was in the first one. And he had some frozen peas. And we thought he should put the frozen peas on his head at one point. And James said, not there. You can't do it there because the next line is not going to be funny. You know, we need to we need to not have it be funny there. And actually, I think Lee uses those peas anyway when I wasn't looking. <laughs> but um, I've been very, very, very fortunate that I've been my ideas have been embraced as they should. They know what they had when they hired you for that role and they ran with it. Thank you. <laughs> so I love how Elise kind of functions as as like a ray of light. She radiates warmth in this dark, scary franchise. So I have, I have two questions about that. First, is there a quality of Elise's that you've taken with you, a source of inspiration that you found yourself referring to in your own life? in the real world? Great question. Um, perspective on some level uh, to consider both sides a little bit more closely. I mean, she's a wonderful listener that I take. I, I hope to take with me. I don't think I've done the very good job, but I, I aspire to be as good of a listener as Elise. You're listening to my question, so I feel like you're my how question. am I doing? <laughs> Look, I just, I just cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> the second half to uh, to that idea. Do you have a favorite Elise like movie character from another film? A character who does function as a ray of light and ups the hope in another really dark film out there? No. <laughs> I can't think of one. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw out the one that came to my mind because I love the Scream franchise. It's Deputy Dewey. Scary stuff happens, but he is always looking out for everybody and That's shines it. through as that sense of hope. OK, that was my answer then. <laughs> You should have answered yourself because that's what you do in this movie. Congratulations on the Red Door and the entire franchise. Fantastic. Great questions. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. 